Hi, we're out here at Grassy Waters Preserve. I'm Cole. I'm Ashley. And we are doing a demonstration of a fun activity that you can use for Earth Day at home. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a model demonstration here of a watershed, even multiple watersheds, a land mass. We're talking about precipitation, pollution, runoff, so some good vocab words that we're using today. So here are the supplies you need. They're really pretty simple. A big piece of paper like this. Uh, if you don't have paper like this, it actually, what are some other options that you use? You could definitely use some newspaper or even the other side of uh, wrapping paper. Yeah, so you can substitute those things. Uh, also some markers you're going to want. Uh, really just about any kind of marker will work. And then spray bottles with some water if you have it. If you don't have that, uh, just a cup like this with some water in it. So really simple uh, materials for this and a lot of imagination. All right, so the first thing that we are going to imagine is that this is an area of land. We can say maybe this is Palm Beach County, all right? And that our markers here are going to represent, unfortunately, pollution on Palm Beach County. So you can choose and make up whatever you want it to be. So I am going to have, this is going to be my fertilizer that comes off of people's lawns. This is gonna be some oil and stuff from cars, machines. And this is gonna be from when people walk their dogs. And you know, actually sometimes people don't pick up their dog poop after them. Shame. And that gets left around too. Shame, shame. I know, what pollution have you got over there? Well, I've got pesticides. And then I also have litter, so that could be cigarette butts, it could be plastic bags that are everywhere, even gloves that get left behind, and then I have smog. All right, so we've got all our imaginary pollution here, our imaginary land mass, and what we're gonna do is put this pollution right on the land. So pretty fun, you can put it wherever you want, and go all over the place. I'm gonna walk the dog all over here. All right. Got a great big golf course here with lots and lots of fertilizers on it. These people put so much fertilizer. On more right over here. Alright. Let's see. Cars were leaking all over this area. You can draw what you're representing. So here's my car right here. Very artistic. Very old tiny car. Bag. Nice. Or it can just be scribbles all over the place. So however you want to do it, works well. <laughs> I like it. I like that litter right there. All right. Here, you want some fertilizer down there? Absolutely. All right. You want some pesticides? Absolutely. Here we go. Mixing it up a bit. All right. Pretty cool. So you are done whenever you think you're done. And the next step is to make our land look a little bit more like actual land. So we need to give it some topography. That means the shape of the land. Even in Florida, it's not quite this flat. So here's how we do that. We take our big sheet of paper here. This part is also very fun. And we crumple it up. I'm gonna send it your way out so we can make it into a big ball. Nice. All right. And we're going to uncrumple again. All right. Pull some down here. Oh, I need you my friend. No, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. We can trade. It's your present. We're going to keep some shape to it, though. And after you roll up the corners. Absolutely. So don't miss this step. You want to roll up the corners so that we keep our experiment here, our model, a little bit contained. But what you can see now is that we've actually created some shape to our land. So this is our topography. So you can imagine here's a nice big uh, mountain maybe, or hill, some low areas, a ridge, that sort of thing. You've got all kinds of shape to the land down there. Oh, that's uh, a great land thing. over here. Nice. All right, yeah, you can name your areas, right? So maybe this is Forest Hill. This, unfortunately, is Dog Poop Mountain over here. So thing about this is we've got this land mass, we've got all this pollution that got put on it, but pollution does not stay where you put it. So what happens is when there's precipitation, that pollution moves. So we're going to take a look at that, but before we do that, we have to think about what precipitation is. So examples of precipitation, actually? We can get it with rain, we can get it with snow and sleet, 
a little bit of ice as well. Yeah, so basically any water that falls from the sky is precipitation, all right? We are going to mimic that precipitation with our respective water here. She's got some nice rain clouds going on. I've got what's going to be a big angry storm cloud over here, and we're going to precipitate on our landmass. Ready to precipitate? Ready. Here we go. Rain right. away. Woo. And storm down. This can take a little bit longer with your spray bottles. You don't cover as much. It's kind of nice and fast if you've got a cup. Let's throw some down your way. Thanks. Sharing caring. All right, so we have precipitated now all over our land mass. I'm pouring all of mine out. All right, so what you can see now is that we actually have bodies of water, right? So we don't just have these mountains and hills and that kind of thing, but we actually have some lakes and ponds, uh, streams, all that sort of thing going on. And all of these bodies of water actually have pollution in them. So if you remember what these represented, all right? So for example, uh, some runoff, some uh, dog poo, some oil, some litter, all that stuff is now in these bodies of water, right? So would you want to drink out of car oil lake no. Or I'm go good. fishing over in Dog Who Pond. Don't know how much I'll catch there. Yeah, so I'm not sure we'd want to use these bodies of water with all of this pollution that ran off of the land. So that's why it's called runoff, because when you get precipitation, it runs off of the land into bodies of water. So each body of water has its own watershed. And a watershed is the area of land where any precipitation that falls there ends up in the same body of water. And you can actually trace that. So for example, the watershed for this pond is gonna be the high points all around that body of water. So this is all the watershed where the water sheds into that body of water. So you can have one watershed be a little pond or a little river, and that river maybe goes into another bigger watershed or body of water, and an even bigger one. So you can be in multiples at the time. If you were to kind of bring this together, me out with a little bit, Ashley. We'll see if we can do this. So we, in Florida, might be in the watershed for Lake Okeechobee or a little local pond or stream, but we are also all in the watershed, whoop, if we can get this all to run off into here, for what we can call the Atlantic Ocean. All right, and stop. So all that also runs off the land and through the bodies of water to the Atlantic Ocean. Would you want to drink this? No. No, a lot of pollution in there. So we want to make sure that we don't pollution, put pollution on our land uh, so that it doesn't end up in our bodies of water and in our own bodies. So I hope you have lots of fun with this uh, experiment, making this model. Thanks for helping me, Ashley. Anytime. All right, have a great Earth Day, everybody. Enjoy.